Welcome to another In Wheel Time podcast, a 30-minute mini version of the In Wheel Time car show that airs live every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central. It's the In Wheel Time car talk show podcasting and streaming around the globe. Coming up, Tim Oshrowitz and auto lending through AI. What? Yeah. A little later in this segment, Jeff has a special report on the 2025 Corvette ZUV. Which is AI generated. It's just ahead on the segment of the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Howdy. Along with Mike out of this world, Mars. We always need more Jeff Zekin. David Ainsley, our chief engineer, sleeping in this morning. Oh, yeah. I'm Don Armstrong. Glad you mm. could join us. And uh, Tim Oshowitz. Hey, Tim, good morning to you, and thanks for joining us, my friend. Hey, good morning, all. Well, how are you? I'm good. It's about 85 degrees out here in Washington, so we're starting to get summer. Oh, my God. You know, th- this is not a good way to start off this interview because it's roasting here. Yeah. Uh, it's supposed to be, you know, somewhere between 95 and 100, I think, today. 100,000. Yeah. 100,000, something like that. But good for you. We're going to live through you today. We're <laughs> going to go for that 85 degrees. <laughs> so, Tim, uh, Vice President of Legal and Regulatory, is the advisor of Informed IQ. What does is, what is Informed IQ do? Sure. Well, what we, we do is... Um, a big portion of the auto lending industry, when they get a loan from an auto dealer, they use us to help process that loan and evaluate it and uh, understand it and um, get it resolved as quickly as possible so people can get their loans taken care of. So, Tim, what, uh, if I'm going to go buy a, let's say I, I'm in the market for a $45,000 car, new one that I'm going to buy over at the, uh, pick one, Chevrolet dealership. Uh, what happens to my loan application? Well, typically what happens is that the dealer will take your loan and they'll shop it around to different lenders and say, hey, what's the best offer that I can get given your financial circumstances? The lender will make a bid on the loan. They'll get the credit approved. And then they send a 50-page um, deal jacket, which is all the you know the, the application and the uh, finance and insurance uh, aspects of the loan to the lender, and then the lender reviews it, and that's where we come in. Okay, and so once, and I guess that my rate for this loan depends on my credit score. Sure. And is there any are there any other factors that are included in that? Well, there's not only uh, you know your credit score; it's your um, your income. They're going to look at your. Um, uh, prior history of what you, you purchased the car, uh, but pretty much right. Just like any other process, they're going to look at you know what your credit score is and you know what your qualifications are to get the loan. So if I get the loan through a dealer, it's been shopped over a bit, and they're going to come back and offer me probably a pretty good rate, I would imagine. Sure, and you know obviously uh, you know. There's different ways to get a loan. You can get it through the dealer. You can also go to your local credit union, and the credit you can get it there, or you can go to your local bank. So there's different ways to get a loan. But definitely, um, the most common way, about eighty percent of the time, people go through their dealers. Yeah, really. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's interesting you should say that because I think that I shopped a loan myself years ago, years ago, and uh, I found that the dealer actually had the best rate. Well, there you go. And so, what does the dealer get out of that? Do they get a percentage of the loan? Well, I think there, there's something called um, you know a dealer markup. So they have some flexibility because when they're getting a loan, they don't know precisely what other features a consumer is going to buy with the car. So they may the consumer may decide to get a vehicle service contract. They may decide to get other types of things with the car. They have some flexibility. So there is a profit incentive for the dealer too. Now, do those those uh add-ons, shall we say, do they get the same loan treatment as the actual automobile itself? Well, that's a really great great question because what happens is, is that it does add to the cost of the car, right? So when you approve the loan, you also have to be able to approve the cost of the add-ons. Okay. So let's just say, for instance, and I know that you know and we all know that there are some dealers that have their own add-ons. Let's just say, here in Houston, Texas, window tint. 
We don't do a lot of undercoating here because we don't need that. But window tint seems to be... Or etching. Uh, window etching. Etching. Mm -hmm. uh, window tint. Um, and let's just throw in maybe a, a service contract. Uh, you know, they advertise a lot on television the fact that you, with, with, uh, with your car, you're going to get a whole year of service. Well, oil changes these days are like, you know, every 25,000 miles. So is that a real, a real place that I need to worry about? Probably not. That would be my guess. That's a really great, that's a really great question because it, one of the things that's interesting these days and a hot topic is junk fees, right? And when you're getting a loan, are you getting the services that you want? Are you getting offered something of value? And that's something which both the government is really focusing on these days. And also, that's a place where AI can help, is stopping junk fees. How, how does AI work and how can it help? Well, uh, imagine this. like The historical way people would process loans is you'd have a 35 or 40-page loan deal jacket. There'd be people at the lenders. They'd be reviewing the loan document. And sometimes it could take about a couple weeks. Now you can have an... Uh, AI processes that can review that loan in a matter of like five or 10 minutes. And what does it do? Here are a couple of things that it can do. Um, say, for example, there's a, a state law that says you can only charge no more than $200 for a dock fee, you know, for registering your car. Yep. We see with our AI that actually the, the dealer charged $350. So we can check it if it goes over the state cap. So that's one thing it can do. It also can read the contract and say, you didn't realize that you were um, say double charge for a product. We can check if the, the product is being double charged. We can, uh, yeah, another really cool thing that happens with the AI right now is when a dealer's setting the loan, sometimes they don't send the entire loan. Like say you have an F&I product and it's a five page document, they'll only send the first page. So what's a lender to do? They don't know what the, the uh, other terms are, but with AI, we have a library of documents and we can find out what the other four pages are. So there's a lot of advantages with AI to uh, help solving these junk fee problems. Okay, so, so F&I, for everybody that doesn't know, means finance and insurance. Mm -hmm. So where does the insurance part come in? Because I already have my car insurance. I got it through Allstate. Yeah, and dealerships it, aren't supposed to sell insurance. So, yeah, well, I don't well, know. Hold so on. Tell, tell us about the insurance aspect of F&I. Well, you know, when I, when, I, when I was speaking of F&I, I was really speaking of the stuff that you guys were talking about before, like vehicle service contracts, yes. you know, rust, tire tire and wheel protection, which is actually um, an insurance policy, tinted mm -hmm. windows. Okay. But if all those things have contracts, right? Like for, or gap, like, you know, a gap is basically there's a product that you can buy when you take your car off the dealership. There's a difference already from the price you got for your loan and the price of the car when it goes off and gap covers it. But there's rules governing that type of product. Interesting. So, Tim, so, so a lot of people, and myself, I think a and I, a, F AI F of generating, oh. uh, generating something, you know, like a, a story or a document or whatever, whatever. But what you're talking about is it actually proofreading yeah. documents. Right. What we do literally is we will get a 45-page PDF, and we will read that document with our technology. So it's literally reading the document, and then what we'll do is like we'll compare from like a, a protection. If the signature on one document is the same as the signature on another document, we'll calculate the income off the document. So AI can do a lot of things. So uh, but can, also, I, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say that there's also, and I, I, I did want to leave you with the promise that. Um, there's also some cool benefits that I think that are going to come down the corner, um, which is they can help consumers when they go through the loan. Right now, when I my parent when I go visit my parents and they have a tough document, I'm a lawyer. I read it for them. We're going to have a future where when you're applying for a loan, you're going to have the equivalent of your own son reading your documents for you. There'll be a co-pilot. There'll be an AI that'll be reading the document with you and saying, hey, this is good. This is bad. So I think that there's a lot of exciting things ahead for consumers when they go into the auto dealership in the future. Can AI be manipulated in such a way that says, oh, well, for most people that'd be good, but for you it'd be bad? Absolutely. Not only can it be manipulated, but it also can create something called hallucinations, right? So I think you may have heard about that. I'm in that. one right now, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but go ahead. I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Right. Well, so uh, there's... The big talk these days is about something called generative AI. 
And yes. what generative AI does is it creates answers. You ask a question, you know, you really ever get an answer from a generative AI product, I don't know, or silence. They always have an answer. And sometimes those answers are wrong. So you need technology to test um, those answers to make sure they're true and they're not making stuff up. Wow. You know, uh, you know, you know. I understand why you, you don't have a lot of hair because your brain's popping out of your head right now. <laughs> hey, that's, that's but me too. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm working with one next to me here as well. I, I mean, it, it's it's mind boggling. Of course, I am not up to date on all the latest stuff, and uh, I would imagine that a lot of our listeners and viewers this morning are kind of feeling the same way, going, "What? What? They can do this?" So tell me about. Informed IQ. What does it do? Right. So what? imagine what we'll do right now is a lender will give us an auto loan, say a 40-page auto loan. And what we'll do is we'll take that loan, we'll read the loan, we will calculate the borrower's income, we will check to make sure that the um, doc fees are correct on the loan, we'll make sure that the singers are right there, we'll make sure that all the requirements for the contract, there's something called um, a RIC, which is um, a contract that you get um, uh, that sort of social concern what's in there. We'll check that. So we're doing all sorts of checks on the loan. And then we can t- tell the lender, guess what? This loan's good to go. You can improve it. What in the world is in a 40-page loan document <laughs> for a car? You're, you're with me. It's, it's crazy. When you think about loans, if you have like a, a the top, the big kahuna, are mortgages, right? There are 100 pages in mortgages. Yes. Second one is auto, and it's not even close. And then everything else is much less. So you have, uh, what do you have in an auto loan? You have the consumer lending application. You have all the add-on products that we talked about, the contract for the add-on products. Yep. We'll have uh, something called a bookout sheet, which is the value of the car. We'll have the insurance proof. You name it, it seems like it's in there. You know, they'll have the references for the consumer just a lot of stuff in that in that packet. Amazing. Oh my God. So, in other words, if I didn't cut my toenails this weekend, it it's would in be there. in there probably. It's in there. Uh, there's a chance. <laughs> now, so, how 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 do you get paid? Do, do you get paid by the loan? Do you get paid by the dealer, dealer? to check the loan? How, how does that by work? By the lender. By the lender. You, by the lender. Okay. So, they say... Tim, we, we, we've got a loan here. I want you to look this over and uh, run it through your system and tell us whether it's good to go or not. Right, right. We don't actually evaluate the creditworthiness, but we just make sure that all the information is there. I mean, one a big thing that people have to do is, you know, you'll have to prove somebody's income and we'll calculate the income off of the pay statement. And what we'll also, and I guess the other thing I would just say is that everybody wants the loans to get processed faster because until a loan is funded by the lender, the auto dealer is still on the hook for that car. So they want to get paid as fast as possible. Right. Sure. Now, as a consumer, I know that, I, no offense to our dealers that are listening, and I know that we have quite a few, but I don't want to be sitting in somebody's office by myself. I'm on my 10th cup of coffee. I can't take any more. Get me out of here. Is there something that I can do when I walk into a dealership to get that process moving a lot quicker? That, that is really an interesting question because one of the new benefits of um, technologies like ours is that if you're in the dealer and they need you to prove your income, you can just, they'll send you a ping on your phone, a text. And you can download your pay stub or other types of information so you can get out of the dealer faster. So tr- everybody is trying to get, to, everybody knows that people have things to do with their lives. And so there's ways to make these loans go faster. So your AI doesn't actually go out and go to one of the credit reporting agencies like Equifax or anything like that. You just deal with, with the documents that you've got there plus what other information I as a consumer give you. Right, 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 and okay. what we the are, dealer and what the dealer gives him of the add-ons that are right, on there, right, right, and the add-ons can be a, either a make it or break it deal. If you've got somebody that's going, hey, look here, man, I don't want that window tint on there. Take it off. The dealer says, I'm sorry, I can't take it off. That's part of the price of the car. This is why I'm selling it. And so, you know, I want to know 
that I'm paying for the window tint in my loan or the dealer has backed that cost out of the loan. In other words, right. I get it for free. And one thing you should know also, I just should add, because I, I at one point in my life, I worked for something called the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, which was a consumer protection agency. And the government right now is really pushing to make sure that consumers don't get what they don't want. So they are um, going after folks who are adding services to products that consumers didn't want to buy or telling consumers that in order to get this car, you have to buy this 10 point contract for 2000 bucks. So there really is a lot of pressure right now to make sure that consumers are not getting junk, junk fees in their products, which is, I think, a great thing. I do too. And how can we ensure ourselves that that's happening? Well, I, I think obviously uh, looking at your contract, knowing that you don't have to pay for something if you don't want it, um, and being mindful, like making sure, for example, that the auto warranty for the, from the manufacturer isn't being duplicated by the vehicle service contract. Right. Uh, people shouldn't have to pay two th twice for the same thing. So uh, can I just call you on the phone and say, <laughs> Tim, I'm going to buy a car here. Is it okay if I send you this document? Well, well, hopefully my advice can be repeated through AI. You know, I'm, I'm happy to help, you know, for you guys, but... Um, definitely, um, there, there are, I think the thing I'd like to just tell the audience is that, you know, there is technology watching it out for them. So if you're going, buying a car, somebody in the back end is checking to make sure that you're not being overcharged for, you know, registering your car, that you're not being overcharged for if you buy a gap product. So that's good to know that letters are putting processes in place today to make sure that consumers are protected. Tim? I want you to enjoy your beautiful day up there in Washington and, uh, and, and enjoy that weather and think of us poor folks down here on the coast of Texas suffering, <laughs> suffering in this air conditioning. I just wanted to I I, I just wanted enjoy to, the air conditioning. <laughs> exactly. Hey, man, we really thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Wealth of information. It's uh, Tim Oshowitz, Vice President of Legal and Regulatory at Informed IQ. Thanks so much, Tim. Thanks, Tim. Bye. That was that lots was, of information. I know. I still don't get the big documents. I just don't understand it. Well, I can't. Have you ever tried to read any of that? I know. It's all legalese and lawyerese, and I don't understand a lot of that. I can kind of put things together and think, well, that's probably what they mean, but I don't know for sure. And it would also probably depend on the dealership you go to, too. Yeah. Pre owned true. versus, uh, you know, a, a dealership like Emmons Brothers is a little different, I would imagine, than uh, a Cadillac store. Right. Or a Ford store. So. Although I, I've heard some really good things of, of some really top-notch dealerships mm -hmm. in town, all above board. Right. And um, I've heard, oh, well, they charge more. I kind of doubt that. Yeah. Because they got to compete with all the other dealers. It's mm -hmm. just how they go about it. Right. So, at any rate. Hey, the Inwheel Time Car Talk Show is available 24-7 through the iHeartRadio app. Just look for Inwheel Time Car Talk. And a new daily podcast is available from your favorite podcast provider. We also video stream our three-hour weekly show on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show continues right after this quick break. Pro-Am Auto Accessories has been serving Houston's auto enthusiasts since 1984, providing world-class products for sports cars, European sedans, and American muscle. Pro-Am is known as the place to go to find exclusive and hard-to-find parts and accessories. Pro-Am is one of the very first distributors in the USA for brands such as Recaro, Redline, Momo, Corbo, and Simpson. Located in the heart of Houston's premier retail and service corridor, the Galleria area, Pro-Am's walk-in storefront includes an 8,000-square-foot warehouse, showroom, and installation. Base. Pro Am not only sells parts and accessories but also offers installation and service. Pro Am is now reaching a worldwide audience through ProAm.com, taking its local reputation to the rest of the world. At Pro Am Auto, you'll be dealing with a small group of professionals who truly want to help you with your automotive needs. If you don't see what you're looking for on the website, call and Pro Am will lend you a hand. Pro Am Auto, 6125 Richmond at Green Ridge in Houston's Galleria area. Call them at 713 781 7755. Want to feel good about something special you did for someone special? In Wheel Time and the original Loopy Tortilla group of Tex-Mex restaurants have joined together to help a very worthy cause, God's Garage, a Christian-based 501c3 charity. We know there are lots of places and organizations out there where you can donate a car, truck, or SUV. 
but we're asking you, our car enthusiast family, to consider donating to God's Garage. Visit GodsGarage.org and learn about its mission, the women that have been helped, how each one is screened, and about their Restore You program. A car donation is an easy way to make a difference in the lives of others. God's Garage needs good operating vehicles, but will take all types in working and non-working condition. Make your heart and soul feel good by donating your gently used vehicle and help support single mothers, widows, and wives of deployed military at godsgarage.org. Hey, if you'd like to get in touch with us, you can always shoot us an email. The address is info at inwheeltime.com. All right. Inside Jeff Zekin's mind. Hold on. We got to load this puppy and, up and, again. And it, it, it's kind of like close the door. But I have to tell you that I have heard this now for a number of years. Rumors of Chevrolet making an SUV kind of Corvette. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, when you told me that you were going to do this, I thought, well, now let's just think about this for a minute. Lamborghini's got one. Porsche's got several. He's, he's doing the review. It's, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's right. Well, I I'm not well, trying. You know, but over I, the years, have, some of the custom car builders have built station wagons. Right. And, and yeah. Different different variations. And, you know, we talked about AI. We just had uh, Tom on from AI. or that cons- Tim. Yeah, Tim. Tom. Um, Tim, Tom. Nevertheless, AI is a big, big part of the world now. So even the words, the article that uh, I pulled this from was generated by AI. These pictures are generated by AI. And here we go, really? Michael. Yeah. Okay, let's go. All right. So SUVs are the obvious brand expander du jour for sports car makers around the world, Don, like Aston Martin, Lamborghini, Ferrari, like you said. Uh, what would a Corvette UV look like? Maybe it would look like a Hyundai Ionic 5, which took SUV of the year, but it's also being called a hatchback. Uh, categories are blurred. When an AI image generator was fired up to mash together thousands of images based on human-entered information for a Corvette SUV, it's no surprise that the results range from Corvette to more SUV. The most surprising thing is some of these things look pretty good. I, I kind of like them. They're, they're pretty groovy. Ultimately, General Motors will make the call on what uh, the Corvette SUV will look like, and there's a lot of AI-generated ideas blended with sports car SUVs that look better than you might think. Can I just interject something here? Hold hold that there, Mr. Morris. Here's the problem that I see. Mm -hmm. When it was a front-engined car, I could definitely see it Mm -hmm. as a CUV or an SUV. But now that it has a rear engine or mid-engine, if you whatever you want to call it, I'm going... Okay, that means you've got to put the back end of it over the top of the engine to make it a real SUV. I don't know. Well, Just no, saying. yeah, these aren't these aren't mid engine. These are still the front wheel front wheel. Uh, well, front, I think front engine car. I, I think say. they're going to be electric. Well, these AI generated SUVs have a lot of muscle. Uh, some are you know sporty creases and uh, yeah, you're right, Mike. Uh, sporty creases and the idea of how some of these are related to a C8, but all the variations of the AI generated look the same, uh, plausible. Some are desirable. Some are kind of hideous, but hopefully it will be a performer. Uh, the sharp angular roof line with the hidden A pillars is also a nice touch, making it look contemporary and futuristic. The large vent on the rear door is pure fantasy. It looks kind of pointless to them. Uh, the Corvette SUV would be a front-engined vehicle don uh, therefore no need for the c8 styling and intakes uh, for a mid-engine mounted power plant so hopefully it would be replaced by the prominent design uh, these are many current hyundai models because they're basing everything on a hyundai design for the ai so would you buy it i probably would you know if it was affordable i'd do it uh you'd have to see one have to drive one some of these are are you know kind of space age and and really don't look good but some of them do so that's that's going to be coming down the the, the, uh, the pike. The pike, the design pike. Uh, some of these youngsters that are you know in the design rooms, uh, they'll be able to figure it out. Well, so is it going to be a Corvette or a Corvette ZUV, there. or is it going to be a Cadillac? Because I would like to think the Cadillac line would really zoom ahead in that era and. Does Cadillac really have anything like that? No. They well, don't. they've got the electric lyric. 
That's a that's you, it, that's you know, yeah. Pure I, I hear where you're coming from. It's more station wagon. Well, you to got me. you got the the uh, XT4, the small Cadillac SUV. You got the five, and you got the XT6, which yeah. is the large, almost the size of a, a little bit smaller than say a Tahoe. Yeah, so you're right. They're in there. Good point. Good point. So uh, well, who's to say? You know darn good and well in the skunk works inside General Motors mm-hmm. Chevrolet division yep. that there are things going on in that regard because yep. they're not going to let the entire world walk off and leave them. No. So, anyway. Yeah. There well, it is. That was a good story. I, I, I was all in. Of course, you know Corvette stuff. I can't help myself. You know that, don't you? <sighs> Do it. <laughs> Motor trend? Is that what you want me to say? Well, the images, that's where the images came yeah, from. So yeah. you have to give them credit. Oh, okay. Bonus you don't trend. have to, but you did. Well, it's all AI. If, uh, if when they call, I'll send them to you. Okay. Yeah, do that. AI. Yeah, Mar- Mars gets to fend off all those calls and uh, all those kind of ugly things. Ugly. Ugly. Uh, hey, today's In Wheel Time Car Show is sponsored by the group of original Loopy Tortilla restaurants in Houston, Beaumont, and College Station. Mm -hmm. So when you're in any of those cities, the original Loopy Tortilla is uh, out there at Highway 6 and I-10. And by the way, I was thinking, we were talking about uh, Stan and the Loopy Tortilla brand. Um, There aren't too many brands around here that uh, have the reputation of the Loopy Tortilla. And it's really neat to know that you can go to the original and see how all of the others are designed with that little house in mind, yeah. with the little rooms and that mm-hmm. sort of stuff. Uh, anyway, Wait. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is also one of our sponsors and Pro-Am Auto Accessories, and we thank them for being with us. All right, time now for a quick break. We are back on the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show right after these messages. Everyone at the Tailpipes and Tacos cruise in at the Loopy Tortilla Tex-Mex in Katy. Thank you for participating in the best cruise in around and look forward to seeing you again. You'll hear about the next cruise in date right here on In Wheel Time. Next time you're in the West Houston Energy Corridor area, be sure and stop in at the original Loopy Tortilla Tex-Mex at I-10 and Highway 6 or the Katy location on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard. When passing through Beaumont or College Station, stop in and have Loopy's award-winning beef fajitas and frozen margaritas. There's always a celebration at Loopy Tortilla. Loopy Tortilla founder Stan Holt and his wife Sheila are winning racers on the NHRA drag racing circuit and have a collection of hot rods and classics that everyone appreciates. Look for them at the next Tailpipes and Tacos Cruise In. The date will be announced soon and will once again be held at the Loopy Tortilla Tex-Mex on 99 and Kingsland Boulevard, just south of I-10 and Katy. We'll give you all the details right here on the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show and online. Donations benefit God's Garage. We'll see you then. You own a car you love. Well, why not let Gulf Coast Auto Shield protect it? Houstonian John Gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts. We promise you'll be impressed. Whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like-new appearance, apply a ceramic coating, install a paint protection film, nano-ceramic window tent, or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to gcautoshield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or gcautoshield.com. That's it for this podcast episode of the In Wheel Time Car Show. I'm Don Armstrong, inviting you to join us for our live show every Every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and our InWheelTime.com website. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeart Podcast, Podcast Addict, TuneIn, Pandora, and Amazon Music. Keep listening, and we'll see you soon.